We good? Hey, uh, Lance, I guess I'll, I'll get started here. I know um, this is signing day, uh, and you had some uh, prospects today, but you also announced the hire of Jim uh, yesterday to be the defensive tackles coach. And I was just curious, uh, what was the thought process behind bringing him on? And if anything, does that change the roles of anyone else uh, on the staff? Uh, yeah, um, good question. Yeah, we, we added Jim Panagos to coach our, our defensive tackles. Um, really excited about what Jim will bring our program. Um, shoot, I don't know how many years I've known Jim now. I met him uh, when he was at the University of Minnesota. He came to Buffalo to one of our camps. I uh, was highly impressed. Um, when when looking at, uh, you know, we the, the earlier changes we made, uh, following the, the end of the regular season, um, continue to analyze our situation. Um, it just resonated to me back um, what I what I initially wanted to do. And when we had when we made some of our biggest improvements at our last job was when we had two defensive line coaches. And um, and, and having Ty Wall coaching the defensive ends, which he's experienced in doing, and then bringing in uh, uh, Jim to coach our defensive tackles was was something I felt was going to be a great opportunity for us. Um, and through that process, knowing that we'd have great alignment um, within our defensive staff room, and uh, this would benefit our players. Um, last season, you know, when we have, you know, I'd say approximately 16 to 20 guys, I don't have the exact number with me yet at the moment, you know, and you're coaching film and you're coaching in, in a course of a practice and, you know, whether it be one-on-one -on -one film, scout team film, opponent film, and, um, you know, you're, you're trying to coach four guys versus splitting it up. And uh, I, again, felt that this will benefit our players in, in development, um, you know, engagement, and, of course, uh, alignment in what it, what we want to do schematically. Um, as far as uh, as I alluded to, Ty Wo will continue to uh, uh, he will work with our defensive ends. Um, Jacob Schoonover will still be heavily involved in in uh, the coordination and 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 uh, of our special teams, but we'll move to move to an off field analyst role at that. But more importantly, um, part of this move was. Um, um, you know, Jacob Schoonover's done an outstanding job in recruiting and um, in in our relations with high school coaches, especially in the state of Missouri and Kansas. And and it came apparent to me as as I traveled with him through Kansas in this, um, as we know, that's going to be a very part of our future is our local recruiting. And he will take over a role as well as uh, director of high school relations that we will have somebody where he can spend more, uh, more time with that and uh, expand that role more and uh, add to our recruiting staff in that way that I feel will benefit our program for the long term. And then also, I guess, sticking with defensive line, with considering that you lose someone in Kyron who's now you know going off for a pro career, how critical was it bringing in someone like Lonnie uh, to help that defensive line room? Um, you know, very important. And, and we continue to, as we look at it, and, and not just because of Kyron and Kyron's, uh, you know, um, one outstanding young man. I think he's, you know, things are going pretty well for him. It appears at the senior bowl. Um, proud of that accomplishment, especially really playing only defensive end one true year. Um, but just like Kyron, we've had others that we've had to adjust and, um, you know, playing, playing from a, a, a three-man front to a four-man front and how players were recruited. Um, that in the linebacker position is still a area for us that we're transitioning um, to fit our defensive uh, philosophy. So um, Lonnie was somebody that we definitely felt we needed to get older uh, and, and get someone who's had experience at the position in that type of scheme. So uh, very excited about the addition of him. And then uh, last for me, you, you had a couple of running backs through the portal as well. And, and Sevion and Kai, I just I think uh, Andy has talked at least a couple of times about how he wants to have multiple guys uh, that, you know, fans know the name of. So just what do you think about adding those two guys? And what does that mean for that running back room, especially bringing back Devin? 
I, uh, well, I, it, it really adds to the, to the room and the quality of the room. And again, that's Andy and the rest of the offensive staff's, uh, um, ability and uh, responsibility to to now utilize some of these guys to the best of their abilities. Um, we've always been an offensive team that philosophically is um, we're going to utilize as many as many of our talented players as many ways as possible. If that means there's two backs in the game at the same time or if there's two or three tight ends or or four four wide receivers. Um, we want to be as multiple as possible. Um, again, uh, you know, Savion was the first one that jumped in. And then when, when, when Kai Thomas, obviously uh, uh, somebody, you know, right down the road, Topeka, the year that he had, a lot of other things that he adds, but more importantly, his, his ability and talent level um, to bring into the room um, was, was something uh, we were very excited about. And, uh, and Devin Neal led the way in that and, and helping, helping in the recruitment of Kai Thomas, which again says a lot about Devin and what he understands is needed for us to to be able to, um, you know, to be the team we want to be. You know, Devin didn't uh, get to play the last game of the year due to injury. Uh, we want to make sure that we have healthy backs and uh, the durability and workload will also be a consideration as we as we go through with any of our players. Um, you know, one thing, especially at that position, I want to add is. Um, you know, yeah, you have to remember that, uh, you know, our starting running back left the program after uh, in the first month of the season. And then shortly after, our, um, you know, the, the season had ended and we went through some things, um, Amari Pixon, uh, uh, Hickson decided to leave the uh, program as well. So sometimes when guys leave the program, you're not just going to always replace with freshmen, especially when you're the youngest power five football team in the country and, and, and one of the youngest teams overall. We, you know, we're extremely young. Um, I like where our talent level is at, but at the same time, as we saw ourselves kind of go through, uh, you know, midway, you know, from whether it be through Iowa State or Oklahoma State or one of those programs that were, you know, Senior Italian, a lot of super seniors, all those things. You start seeing where our youth and overall physical development isn't completely where it, where it's going to be someday, and we have to address that. And we have to also address the fact that we want to be a program that's going to embrace competition, not just on Saturdays, but daily within our program. Lance, when you talk about Devin bringing Kai in, you also had Rich Miller reach out to Kalen Garvin. Um, you had Kenny Logan reach out to Eric Gillier. What does it say about these guys trying to look to some of their friends to help get part of this thing that you guys are trying to build? Well, I, I think what it says is, again, it, it goes to the, I, I believe, the quality of the young men we have in our program and, and knowing what it, what it takes. Um, you know, you mentioned Rich, you know, from the day, uh, you know, Rich came here. I, I've tried to, you know, make sure he said, you know, Rich never started a game in Buffalo. OK, and, and he ended up being probably, if not our most consistent linebacker uh, statistically, um, you know, in many different ways of the role he has. But he also is a great team player and he understands roles and depth and competition and all the things I just sort of alluded to. And, and of course, you know, Kenny had a, a late, late, excuse me, a relationship with Eric, um, you know, so across the board, you um, our guys know that it, it continues and, and embracing competition, whether it be at your position or whatever, that we need to add to our program and always have to. And, and college football's changed. It's changed since the first day I stood at the podium in front of all of you with, with the transfer portal and, and, and NIL and a lot of other things. So all these things, have, we, we have to be able to change with the times. And I think our players are as well. Hey, Lance. Here over the last few weeks, I know you've been, you and the staff have been in a lot of high schools locally, Kansas City, Kansas City, Missouri, Wichita. Just talk about the importance and, and the emphasis you guys are putting on local guys. Well, it's it's very important to us. And we've been quickly uh, able to see the quality of players. And, and that can be through past studies uh, upon arrival about guys that are playing, whether it be, you know, at other local power five schools or the ones that even have left the state that uh, there are players 
right within the, the areas that you mentioned and a little bit further out that we, that we feel can be the nucleus and building blocks of our football program. And we said that early on and, uh, you know, it's not always going to work out. You're going to get everyone and it's not in, that you're always going to be able to take everyone. But at the same time, we have, if we're going to, if we're going to say it, I thought it was very important when time allowed to get a chance to meet some of these coaches, get into schools, but also we got to back up what we're going to say. And I, I couldn't tell you, John, it, it was great. I really enjoyed it um, from what we could see. I think the coaches have, have uh, appreciated um, what we've been able to do in communication, at least in this short period of time. And, uh, you know, for many of them, it said it's the first time that, you know, a KU head coach had been in their building in a very long time. And I know, I don't think there was any walk-ons announced, but I know there's some walk-ons that have decided to choose Kansas. Just talk about the importance of building that program. Yes, uh, you know, I haven't got the clean, you know, especially with school canceled today, where we're at as far as who I can comment on. But again, uh, we had a fairly large junior day a couple weeks ago, um, continually to, to embrace that as, as far as where we want that to be um, for many reasons, um, you know, uh, you know, within a drivable distance, the in-state walk-on is very important to us. The cost of going to college and paying one's own way. Um, we've seen the value of, uh, you know, a, a Jared Casey, uh, you know, a walk-on making huge impact. Um, and again, those are those type of guys that uh, have grown up in this state and um, have desire to represent this university. And we want to make sure that, uh, you know, when we look at our walk-on slots and what we can do roster-wise, um, again, we want to start right here and work out from there. Yeah, and last one for me, Lance. You know, that late signing day usually means the end of recruiting, but obviously <laughs> you guys probably carry some spots forward. So this moves into the spring for you, doesn't it? Yeah, I don't think this will ever stop now with the portal the way it is and and slots. And, you know, as we continue to, to get near that 85 that we want to be and, um, the transition, you know, you're still in a balancing, uh, a balancing act world of, so to speak of, of how many initial scholarships you have, you know, part of it was how many mid-year slots we were able to bring people in, how many, how many scholarships we'd have even to use, but then also, uh, yeah, unfortunately, uh, I think, uh, I, I think, uh, some publication even did a, a, a pretty nice article yesterday, about uh, the total numbers of guys, what the average have been across the board, what the average has been of, of guys leaving after spring ball. And, and now you have to try to plan for some of those and, and make sure uh, you, know, you, you can kind of address those things. But at the same time, none of us have a crystal ball to know where, where you end up, uh, you know, what positions those be and who those will be. And, uh, you know, we continue to work to, to even out our scholarship numbers. We're still, we're unbalanced in some scholarship areas on our team from the time we arrived offensively and defensively. We have some positions that are heavy laden and, uh, you know, uh, we work uh, to, to kind of balance that. So um, school being closed here today and everything, uh, we, we zoomed as a staff all morning um, on our 23 board and, and doing things. So between the 23 board and, and then what's still going to maybe transpire here in the next few months, uh, as you know, it never really stops. Thanks to, to the point about the scholarships and the numbers and the positions, you, you bring in only six high school players now. Um, is there going to be a fine line you think moving forward about how many scholarships you're going to have to designate for transfers for experienced players versus high school players? And that, that just seems like a very difficult line to have to walk in terms of balancing everything as you put a roster together. Uh, absolutely. Uh, it is. Um, you know, it's, you know, we have a grid, uh, how many scholarships we're going to have allotted for each position. And then we have it broken down by, by what grade they're in from freshman, a true freshman to a registered freshman, so on. And if they burned a redshirt year or not. And then, uh, you know, right now that, that is not anywhere near where we would like it to be in, in some areas we're really bunched up, um, you know, with, I'll give you an example is, uh, you know, Sam Burt coming back, which we truly wanted him for so many reasons, but we have four senior to be defensive tackles. Okay. Well, that, that, then you get really young all of a sudden. So there's some things that we have to balance. Um, so again, when you look at it, uh, 
you know, how many would you take younger? How many do you gonna, are you going to look older? Now older becomes, is it portal or is it junior college? Um, and there's a lot of things that, that we try to balance. And again, as I started um, today's press conference, really about the youth and where we sit, um, you look a lot in our defensive secondary, how many really true freshmen, redshirt freshmen are playing. Okay, and that's why we've kind of looked a little bit older. So those things try to balance that you don't have big hits at one time, but obviously um, through COVID and other things that have happened, our freshman, redshirt, freshman, redshirt, sophomore classes are pretty bunched up right now. And then the only position group you didn't seem to address this year was wide receiver. You've obviously got some guys coming back and some guys who are talented who, who you've lost. Um, is that a conscious effort? Did you just strike out on some guys? What's kind of the assessment there in that group going, having a big zero there for that one? Well, uh, uh, well, truthfully speaking, that's one of the positions we're definitely over scholarship at the moment. Okay. And so, so that, that, that was one of the reasons, sure. um, like I said, uh, um, not being here before, um, and you look at the difference, you know, whether it be from spring, from the spring game, or even times before that, um, again, looking at scholarship numbers and, and what the philosophy was, there was ways that, um, again, candidly, that it was recruited like a 11 or a 10 personnel team, but yet tight ends and fullbacks were being signed as well. So we're, it's really bunched up and, uh, we're, we're about 10 scholarships over last season on offense and we were defense. And we're trying to get a lot of things balanced because I think that affected our special teams as well. So, um, you know, so that went right now as a position, even though we lost a talented player in Kwame Lasseter, that uh, we, we know that at the moment that we, we had to hold tight there. Hey Lance, obviously there's a, a good crop of guys that can use that super senior season um, who all, has said they're going to come back or are back with the team now? Um, well, I, I guess I didn't really view it as a super senior season. Um, I, I don't know if you have anyone in particular. Right now we're sitting about nine seniors, eight seniors. I, I guess if I would, I, is might as well, since that type of question is asked, the only one that's really decided not to play that, that has had eligibility at this time really um, well, you, you saw Miles Kendrick went into the portal. So let me, l let me address that. That was something that was discussed. Even he didn't know if he was going to play again to going through things. That was, there was great dialogue um, with us and, and, and very open discussions on both sides. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate him. And, you know, he's hoping to get himself in a position where he's healthy enough to, to go compete for a job. Miles Fallon had decided also at quarterback, to, uh, to, to move on as well. He's gonna be finishing up school. Jamal Horn was a, was a receiver that went into the portal. He is graduating and moving on. Um, so there's some, since we've started, Colin Grunhardt has decided not, not to continue to play, you know, through the injury and coming back. And he had a, you know, he had a setback through his rehab of that. And, um, you know, he came back for about the first week and, and, uh, handled it like a pro and like the, the mature young man that he is and uh, just uh, has decided just to finish up his academics and his master's degree. And uh, we, we truly appreciate everything he gave our program. And specifically, then I'll follow up. Um, someone like Malcolm Lee, is Malcolm decided to uh, use that extra year? Yeah, yes. If, uh, I guess, you know, again, not having a whole roster here, there's guys here, Malcolm, Malcolm Lee is, is back and in the program. And Looking for him, I, I thought he, I thought he finished strong and and getting more comfortable with what we're doing. Looking for him to take another stride here. Hey Lance, just big picture. What did you guys accomplish with this class? Um, well, you know, I, I think that what we've been able to is some athleticism at the linebacker spot. You know, uh, you know we. Again, as we looked at ourselves late in the year, we, we, we needed to add there. I mentioned about our special teams. I think most importantly, um, competition. You're going to hear me say that a lot. I think you'll hear me use the words alignment and competition probably almost to the point you'll be tired of it here till maybe next August is, is because those are things that became very apparent to us is being aligned and, and making sure that we have enough um, 
um, competition in our program that guys are going to go out each and every day to reach their fullest potential, not necessarily inherit a job by someone else moving on. And um, by doing that, I, I think our, our team will get better. The individual will become better. It'll be, and uh, I think those are the things that some of these young men are going to give us. Uh, Kalen Gervin's going to help us at, at corner that way. We talked a little bit about the, about the running backs and linebackers. Um, you know, we're excited about Nolan Gorsica from Omaha that transferred from Buffalo. He was one that we were really excited about when he, when he, when he committed to Buffalo. I think he's a young man that, you know, probably would add a lot more attention if it wasn't a COVID year. And, uh, when he was desired to get closer to home, that was one that we wanted to really get to, um, but those are the things I, I think right now, I, I think the way we finish the year and, and right now through Matt Gildersleeve in the weight room, talking about how the guys have blended in, um, things are off to a very positive start. And specifically Craig Young, uh, what kind of player do you expect him to be? You know, he's a long, good looking athletic, uh, you know, linebacker, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I, I forgot to, uh, I think it was Kenny Logan or somebody said something when he was on his recruiting visit, like, uh, you know, that uh, like something like Coach Simpson wasn't messing around or something like that. So in recruiting. So, you know, Craig's a guy that, uh, um, you know, is very talented, even to his own. He he you know, he's looking for that fresh start and rededicating himself to get himself to to the fullest of his potential. I, I had a coach that uh, saw him at Ohio State camp and kind of an individual workout. And after Craig had, had, you know, it was announced he was coming here, he said that was about as good looking of a workout of a young man that he had seen in all his time. So he's, he's a very talented athlete. And, uh, and now it's a, you know, it's a time for him to uh, maximize it while he's here at Kansas. It's time for one more. Hey, Lance. Uh... We talked all last year about, you know, the timing of your arrival. And you said, isn't it going to be nice when we don't have to talk about that anymore? Uh, I wonder if it feels like you're there. I know things have changed. You've spent a lot of time today talking about how different things are. But does it feel like you're kind of in that regular routine and flow of, of a season again yet or no? Um, we're getting closer. <laughs> we're getting closer. You know, we're not even, what are we, nine months into this yet? Is that what you told me, Daniel? Um, you know, so uh, it, it's been fast and furious yet. I mean, uh, comfortable in, in, in really how we're working. And now, now as we implement new staff members and things and new players, I mean, that's always going to be evolving, um, you know, as far as our families and things like that go. Um, I, I think everyone still is uh, extremely excited to be here and love being in Lawrence. I think we have to get through this spring component of watching our players fully um, understand and embracing what a year round um, program will be under us, um, what it's like to continue to improve our culture and take the steps that we, we kind of were able to take there in November and keep building upon them and, and not be satisfied because we still have a lot of work to do. Yeah, just quickly following up on that culture thing, does it feel night and day compared to where you are today heading into spring versus when you first got here and tried to tackle that thing right with the season around the corner? I think so. I, I, I think it has because the players have embraced it, uh, you know, a lot better. And I want to credit them from the start of a lot of things were different. Um, I always kind of, as you know, refer to a lot of things Kenny Logan says and, you know, because he spends a fair amount of time in my office and I asked him, you know, what do you like best about what we're doing? And, you know, he'll talk about the schedule, the structure, you know, the things that, that we have to do that they have to do each and every day. Then I ask him what he likes least about kind of what we do. And he says, the structure, <laughs> everything they have to do. And, uh, and so it's, it's what they wanted. It, it's what they know is, you know, is going to help make them better, but yet it's much like a lot of things we all have to do. It, it can be very tedious and things. And uh, so, but as a whole, they're understanding it. And I think, again, a lot of that goes to our assistant coaches. It goes to our strength coach, Matt Gildersleeve and his staff. And I think they're understanding um, a little bit more about this and, and uh, we're starting to see the dividends of that.
Great. Thanks.